In a previous video, we built Angie, our own personal AI assistant that can help us manage our email, manage our calendar entries, manage our tasks, as well as our contacts. Hey Angie, what's on my calendar today? Hey Angie, can you create a new appointment for tomorrow? have a follow-on meeting with George at 12 p.m. In this video, we'll be adding this perplexity tool that will give Angie superpowers. It'll give her the ability to check on the current events across the globe, across the nation, as well as real-time stock updates. Hey Angie, what's going on in the U.S. today? Hey Angie, um, what's the stock price for NVIDIA today? We'll be giving Angie these superpowers by building this perplexity tool. So this perplexity tool consists of calling the perplexity API followed by some uh, pros, uh, processing. So first of all, what is perplexity.ai? It's a conversational search engine. You can think of it as a Google search with AI chat. It also has real-time information retrieval, as well as citations and source transparency. So super cool. We'll be using a API from them to be able to build this tool. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to this URL to get our API key. So once we do that, we can just have a quick look at the supported models. There are three online models. So there's the 8 billion, 70 billion, and uh, 405 billion models and each of these have this uh, online suffix. So what that means is online means that it has a, access to the internet data. So you uh, have the ability to uh, look up the latest news as well as uh, stock information, for example. So uh, this is what you want. And of course it has a very uh, large context length, which means that um, the input and the output uh, that the model uh, can receive and output is uh, quite large. Uh, for uh, the, the more simple use cases, uh, 8 billion is more than enough. For more complex uh, uh, detailed uh, query, uh, you would want to use the higher one. The 8 billion one is uh, quite inexpensive and uh, very uh, useful uh, for our particular use case for Angie. So let's dive into the build. Let me just show you what I'm using. So this perplexity tool is built using a uh, call NA10 workflow. So this workflow here is this sub workflow that will be called with this. So I will uh, open this up. And whenever I build a tool, first thing I do is I name the tool name, and then I give it a description. So this description, the um, AI it, uh, uses this to figure out when to call this tool. So when conducting uh, research using perplexity AI online model, uh, we use this. So it'll figure out that you know if I have uh, internet search, it'll uh, use perplexity. And then I'm going to give it uh, the workflow ID. So that's the sub workflow. Now I'm going to give it a um, uh, I'm going to define a uh, input parameter, right? So this schema here um, is a representation that uh, that tells uh, the large language model how to call the subflow. So in the subflow here, right, what do you pass into it? So if I go here, what I'm saying is that I've got something called query, a property called query, and uh, it's going to be a perplexity search term. So the AI will take this and understand, okay, um, I'm gonna pass the query and I'm going to replace that with the search term that I'm looking for. So then you're gonna go into the execute workflow trigger, right? So uh, when you execute this, uh, it's gonna have a query parameter and then we're gonna call into this perplexity API, all right? So this perplexity API, this is the endpoint. So this is the uh, uh, place where perplexity uh, gives you the API, and then we're going to call it using POST. Now, I'm going to, uh, um, for the authentication, uh, there's a header authentication. So you can select this, and then when you open this up, you have to uh, specify authorization, and then uh, and then your API key, right? So bearer, bearer, and then space API key. So that's, that's what you put into here to access uh, the authentication. 
Next, uh, you specify that you want to send the body of uh, uh, the request to this API. And then if you look into here, I'm specifying the small online, right? So I've, I've got the small, uh, the, the, slar, so the small model. And then uh, there's a system message that I'm passing in, as well as then uh, the query. So this query here, this is uh, what's passed into the trigger node here. So this trigger node will pass into this uh, a, a query uh, that represents a, the perplexity uh, query that I, I need. And once it's finished, what I'm doing here is I'm taking the output of the perplex API, getting the results, and then there's also citation. So one of the advantages of perplexity is that it has citation. So uh, the input that it gives you or the output that it gives you, it will tell you where it got it from. So this is really cool. So I pass the citations back. And then what will happen is that all this information will go uh, into uh, Angie and, and uh, she can process it. So let me just show you an execution of this. So if, as you can see here, uh, this is a execution that I just did here. So it's asking, it's passed in NVIDIA stock price. This is what uh, I asked it, right? So then it goes into here. And then uh, if you look at the information here, so it's calling this uh, and then uh, calling this parameter here. And then after uh, it's done that, it's got this result. So you look at the results here, it's got uh, the price, right? So th this is the content. And then it's showing you where it's got the information through the citations. So then if I look at the citations uh, afterwards, um, the, the data afterwards uh, will have both the uh, the stock price as well as the citation, right? So Angie uh, will then be able to display both the stock price as well as the citation. So pretty cool. In just a few uh, short steps, we're able to add the superpower to Angie.